Hey everybody, my name is Coolblood. I'm bringing you all this video of me playing a board, or talking about a board game. Man, I got to get used to changing that saying. Um, but this game we're going to talk about today is going to be Botanic, or B Botanic. Um, I will do a solo playthrough because there's uh, somebody who made some homebrew rules about it. But I just wanted to take a moment just to appreciate the simplicity of another small box big game. Because I haven't done one of these in a little bit. Um, and it, surprisingly, it's a little bit difficult to find small box big games that I can actually play solo. Um, maybe I need to find friends to start playing with them. But anyway, um, my my lack of ability to play a board game with multiple people at the same time aside. Uh, this game, Botnik, is an interesting two-player game. It's a two-player only game. Uh, well, I guess one to two-player game, I should say, since you can play it with one player. And uh, the one player the one player version of this, uh, which like I said, is a custom rule set made by somebody on Board Game Geek, uh, is actually pretty sufficient. Um, I feel like I get the amount of feel and depth and everything about this game but this is a tile laying game uh, you're essentially trying to build a path and match colors and it's a tile laying type situation there, there's a there's a good bit of a sorry there's a good bit of things that revolve around the tile laying aspect um but pretty simple straightforward game um this game uh it reminds me a lot of oh i forgot yes it reminds me a lot of um, something like Lost Cities, but instead of cards, you're doing tiles. It, I actually, meh, I kinda. Um, I do want to take a moment to talk about the insert the game comes with, which is this one. And this particular insert is actually great. It's fantastic. Um, as you can see, I have a bag because I do as a bag pulling game instead of a towel, like putting the towels to the side so I can randomize the towels. But the uh, insert is pretty nice. Uh, everything fits inside of it. It's a nice sturdy plastic. Um, really cool. Uh, it got sketch a little character going on, but I'll do it to the side. Because, like I said, I use the um, I use this little orange bag here. So inside the box, you get uh, well, I have the coin version, the coin edition, which literally comes with just this metal coin. I think the normal game comes with this token as well. This nice, uh, it's like a, I don't know what material it is, but it's like glass-ish. I don't know. Uh, it's porcelain, maybe that's the word I'm looking for. But uh, in this game, you're essentially trying to build a little path. Uh, so here's some tiles that you get. Uh, this is actually one of the start player tiles. <clears throat> and when you build the path, you're trying to match colors and do certain things. There's different tiles that do different things, but at the end of it, you will score points based on how you've connected things. Uh, and one of the cool aspects of this is the mechanism for getting tiles to place. So as I said before, the, um, the, the general gist of the game is that you're, you're drawing a tile, and then you're, or so you're choosing a tile from a river, from a splay, and then you're trying to put place the tile or get the tile and strategically maneuver and all the all the other stuff. Um, but the the other thing is you're also trying to prevent your opponent from getting the things that you want, and it sets up really a really good like versus system, a really good crisis, if you will, as I like to kind of commonly quote. And that crisis that you have is like, okay, if I take this piece, then my opponent gets that piece. And I don't want my opponent to have that piece, so I need to take this piece instead. But you also need to make sure that you're getting the things that you need so you can do stuff. So just to kind of give example, so I can do the good old show, not tell type situation. Um, this is what the starting board will look like, which I'll position like this. Uh, this is one player side, this is the other player side. You put five random tiles here in the middle. And at the start, uh, everybody, this is one of the starting pieces, so this is my player's piece here. And I'll be starting my build from here. And at the start of your turn, uh, let's say I'm the first player, um, I will choose one of these tiles to take in place. Um, the main thing is that when I choose those tiles to take in place, that's three randomly chosen from the from the bag, so I drew from the bag here. And I take one of these, and uh, the one I choose, I'll put over here. Now there's different things that you'll see on these tiles, you'll see different directions, you'll see different um, angles. Some have two spaces, some have one space, like this one has only one little connection, this one has four connections, this one has two. Uh, there's some that have three connections and so on and so forth. I uh, actually think I threw it on those back in the bag. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to take tiles. I'm oh, sorry, when, when you take the tiles, you're trying to take them, and when you do, you either put it in the middle or you put it on the sides. So specifically on my side. So I'm trying to match the either the same kind of tile, which this is the same kind. These are both the same kind of tiles. Or I'm trying to match the same color, uh, which... Uh, we'll see. I don't, I don't have any good examples out here. Everything is the wrong color. Here, here's a, here's a color. So we're working match the same color. So, so let's say hypothetically if this was out here uh, amongst these ones. And as you can see, they all come in different colors. There's five colors. There's green, yellow, uh, sorry, green, yellow, black, blue, and red. So that's the five colors in the game. And you'll score points based on how you place your tiles, which we'll talk about in a second. But just to continue on with this part, 
So first thing I'll do is I'll choose one of these tiles. I'll say I want to take this one, and like so. Boom, I'm done. My opponent would go, my opponent would choose one of these tiles and put it on their side of the board. So let's say my opponent wants to choose this one and they'll put it there. And then uh, now it's back to my turn, I want to choose this one. If I want to, well, I'm not gonna be able to do what I was gonna say. All right, cool. So I've done that, so I've done that. Uh, now we draw three more tiles. My opponent would be the first one to go. Oops, too far. My opponent would be the first one to go, so we draw three new tiles, there we go. And now my opponent goes first, and my opponent will decide to, or to take one of these tiles. My opponent takes this one, and now it's my turn. So on my turn, I'm going to place a tile, but I'm going to try to place one in the middle. So when I take a tile and I put it in the middle, like so, I'm replacing that tile in the middle. Now we have to check, we do a mini check to see if these are still legally placed. Because remember before I said it has to be the, either the same kind of tile or the same color of tile. So in this particular case, this is the same color, so that's fine. This is not correct anymore. This is now um, two different kinds and not the same color. So this tile is now released. So I now get it and I have to immediately place it. When I place it on my little build here, let me zoom out a little. When I place on my little build here, I can either put it somewhere to the side at the place illegally, meaning that I'm not able to dead end any of the spouts here, but I can place like so and just continue building or I can place like this. I'm just gonna place my like little that. There we go. So that was my opponent's, um, no, th that was my placement, wasn't it? Yes, that was my placement. Now my opponent's gonna take this last tile and they're gonna put it there because they want that one. And then it's gonna go back to me. I draw three, two, three. And now we have uh, we have a botition. So a botition tile is actually pretty cool and interesting. So I'm just actually gonna, just gonna go ahead and take this now. And then I'm gonna have my opponent, just because we wanna get the example. Let's say my opponent did that, they took this. They're gonna get, they're gonna release this one. They're gonna place this tile somewhere on their board. And then I get this botition. When I get the botition, which is a special tile, I'm going to essentially be able to replace this botition with one of the middle tiles and uh, then I can get some stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, hmm, I want that tile. So I'm gonna take this tile, I'm gonna put my partition there now. And if there were tiles here, which there are not, if there were tiles there, we would check to see if the rules are still satisfied. If they are, then those tiles stay. If they're not, they get released as well. So you can possibly release multiple. You can chain your releases. I'm gonna place my little uh, pipes there. And then uh, now my opponent's gonna go. My opponent's gonna take this one, put it there. Then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take this one, put it there too. Next round. One, two, three. And as you can see, the game is pretty smooth, pretty straightforward. Uh, the strategy of this game comes out to how you build your set. Now, as far as how the points work in this game, the points, the scoring is actually very interesting. Uh, so let me just use all the tiles that I have out here and just build a generic structure. Um, throughout the course of the game, let's say this is what my in-game state looks like with all these tiles that I have presumably placed while playing. Um, as I build my stuff out, um, I'm, I'm trying to aim to have sections of three. And the rulebook, uh, I, I wasn't able to clear, clarify this before actually doing this particular recording, but the rulebook is a little bit vague uh, as far as I've found so far on how the scoring actually works as far as the sections. So I'll need to do a little bit of research on that. So definitely take this with a grain of salt and definitely consult your local rulebook <laughs> when you are gonna go and, uh, or if you do go out and take this game for a spin. Let's see, I wanna do this here. And what I'm essentially doing is I'm essentially just assuming that this is a build that I was doing uh, during a game. Let's say I had this little corner piece here. Oh, I want this T-shape right there. And I want to put this little piece here. And I want to connect this down here like so. It's a little unfortunate. And then I'll put that there. All right, cool. Good example. So let's say this is what my in-game state looks like. So at the end of the... Oh, actually... Uh, this is gonna be a bad example. Let's do. Hmm. I would logically try to do that. And then maybe I did this number. There we go. So let's say this is what my in game state looks like. The first thing you do when you're about to score in this particular game is you take a look at your board. Anything that's not connected to your starting area, so anything that's not continuously connected to that, is immediately deleted as you remove it. So I'm gonna remove this because it's not connected to my pipe work. And this is not connected to my initial pipe work. Okay, it's over there. And uh, now we're gonna score our points. The first thing you do is you score one point for each flower that you have, uh, ignoring the triple flowers for a second. Actually, let's uh, spice this example up here. Let's do this number. Cool, um, and, and I know I just kind of rearranged a little bit of the example, but sure. Uh, let's say this is a situation, and let me zoom in a little bit because we don't need to see everything here. And uh, I'm gonna score one point for every flower that I have, excluding the end caps, if you will. 
So I'm gonna have one, two. So I got two points. And then I'm gonna get one, or I'm gonna get one point for each tile in a set of three, or sorry, in at least a set of three of the same color. So I'll get one, two, three points for this. I'll get one, two, three, four points for that. I'll get one, two, three points for that. And I'll get one, two, three points for that. So I do not get any points for that one. Uh, I do get points for these ones, and that's kind of how I get the points. Uh, the part where I was saying the rule book was a little bit unclear on this particular part is I don't know if this is a continuous line. So if I were to extend this out, say for a fourth one like this, and let's assume that that was legal, just assuming here, um, I don't know if this would be one, two, three, four. I'm assuming it would be one, two, three, four, but I've been scoring it that way, and the game has been pretty fair so far in the few uh, solo games I've played, but don't quote me on that. Please check in the um, description, or please, sorry, please check in the com the comments below because I'm pretty sure somebody will correct me. Uh, thanks to the Cunningham effect, which is put the wrong answer out there and somebody will answer correctly for you. Put the wrong answer out there on the internet specifically. Um, it's probably not even the Cunningham effect. Um, and then after I score those points, so this is like three, six, nine, 12, plus one, so 13. Uh, 14, 15 for the flowers, and then for each ink cap that's connected to its same color, you also get points for those flowers. So I think I said about 15, 15, 16, 17, 18, and I get no points for that one. Yes, it's connected, but it's not being fed by its same color, so it doesn't count. So my total score ends up being 18, uh, if I remember my math correctly. Let me try again. This is 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 19, okay, plus three, 19. So my total score would be 19. And that's how you would score the game. Uh, the main thing of this game is that it feels very competitive uh, with the solo mode I've been playing so far. I feel like in a two player game, because of the mechanic of, you know, you wanna try to place tiles so you can make sure that you release something, but your opponent doesn't release something. And you'll make sure that you have your timing right so we can, you know, if you get one of these end caps, you can actually place it in a way that's reasonable for you, but you also don't wanna cut yourself off because there can be situations to where you might end up completely cutting yourself off, which if you do that, then you've effectively just kind of ended your own game. So of course, try to avoid that. Uh, but the game does let you place your tiles like so, so you don't fully dead end yourself. And um, I would assume if the rule book doesn't say it, I would assume that there will be a house rule at the very least, or I would implement a house rule saying that you cannot cut yourself off like that because otherwise the game just ends immediately and becomes no longer fun. Uh, and yeah, once the tiles place is placed, just a normal tile placement type style. And it's a, also a pretty game. Um, I mean, the, the artwork is a little, little quirky and a little strange, especially some of these professors or these uh, botticians. Um, some of these botticians look pretty uh, <laughs> eccentric, but I'm, I'm kind of cool. I'm kind of, I'm kind of liking the eccentric style. You know, eccentricism is in. That's kind of one of my, uh, one of my favorite uh, art styles. That's not true. I just made that up. But on the same token, uh, this game is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty small. Uh, there is a house rule, or there is a solo rules that was made by somebody. And those solo rules are essentially just for a bot decision, for player two decisions. And I'm going to do a playthrough of that um, after this. But my ultimate thoughts on this game is that I feel like this game punches well above its weight, which is very good. Uh, and it does it successfully. Like, this is a very small game. Uh, you see I can fit the whole thing in this little bag. So I could, if I want to, just carry the entire game in this bag and then maybe just uh, simulate this on a table because it's literally just placeholders. That's all it is. This board is just placeholders. Um, so just kind of set your tiles up in a, in a little a little section to represent the um, five for the middle. And you can pretty much play this game super portably. Like uh, I can play like this and then me and, my, me and whoever I'm playing with can say, all right, there's my tile and right, there's my tile and there's, there's mine. And then they can release theirs and do their thing. And you can kind of play this game without the board. So this game is like even more portable than maybe I anticipated or maybe I understood at the very beginning. Um, but that's that's kind of the the cool the beauty of the game, and uh, also the decisions that it forces you to make sometimes are pretty pretty like intense. Like there are some situations to where I remember playing against a solo bot, and it's like okay I want this tile, but I don't want my opponent to get that tile, so I need to take that tile and then maybe get this tile if it's left. But I know if I take that tile, so it's like let's let's see. So we got this situation going on. So just going with our peril here. So I can say, and let's say this is available for me to take. I can say, okay, I want this tile, but I don't want my bot to get that tile. So how do I get this tile while preventing my, my opponent from getting that tile? Uh, okay, okay. Maybe I'll take this one now and then hope that it's left for me later. And then if my opponent doesn't take this, they take this instead, then I get that. But, but you know what, you know what? 
if I don't take this, they're going to get three points. They're going to get three whole points. And if I let them get three points, is that more valuable in the connections? Ah, I don't know. And it, it gives you that sense of crisis, that sense of peril that we're always looking for in these uh, board games, that, that puzzly aspect, as uh, many people call it. And uh, that, that's something I highly appreciate about this game. So definitely one of the games for me to highly recommend. This game's called Bot uh, Botnik. Uh, Botanic. I think Botanic might be the proper pronunciation, but Botnik is what I've been calling it this whole time. Or actually, I might have been saying Botanic. I don't know. One of those two words. But there's a, there's a, there's a box. I uh, definitely recommend checking it out. It does have solo rules, so I'm definitely going to do a solo playthrough of it right after this. And uh, that's pretty much it. So definitely let me know if you play this game, what you think about it, and if you like it. And hope you all enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you all whenever.